they're being surrounded by friggin' UFOs. I find it amazing that on the one hand, you can have the Pentagon saying, you know, we don't know much about UFOs, absolutely nothing at all. We know no credible evidence. <laughs> but by the way, we do know that they can remotely disassemble our nuclear missiles, and we do know that they, uh, they can psychotronically manipulate human perception. How the hell do we know that? I mean, duh. I mean, seriously, I, I, that's, that's my problem. So you can clearly see that the American intelligence sector has gone into panic mode because of the congressional hearing with David Grushk and the two pilots. But the thing that's really grinding my gears are their shitty, lame, outdated ridicule tactics that everyone sits back and listens to mainstream media and propaganda put out on YouTube and all these skeptic websites debunking everything to do with UFOs and aliens when really if you really look at all the statements made by the US intelligence sector they're basically all contradicting themselves if you look at every statement made or in practical ways how they started the UAP task force if there were no aliens why would they spend millions of dollars creating a task force that is investigating UAPs unidentified anomalous phenomenon you know why? Because aliens are real. And just a sad thing to throw in there, the sad thing about the UAP task force, which Jeremy Corbell has recently revealed, is Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the guy leading the UAP task force, has literally been put this team together and they've created it basically to ridicule and debunk the subject. If you watch their congressional hearing, how he basically just denies anything about UFOs and aliens but then when they ask him questions about cases that have been proven or that are being investigated he contradicts himself every single time. Why? Because they put that task force together to basically be a, a political puppet basically there to inform the public and basically spread the propaganda that's coming from the intelligence community behind the scenes. Same as NASA, if you look at them, they're also a part of this cover-up. And why are they covering this up? Well, that is the question. If it wasn't real, why would they bother going to this amount of effort to cover up this subject and make it so secretive? Anyway, we'll be exploring today what's been happening and how the media has been basically disinforming the public and brainwashing us into thinking that UFOs aren't real. Anyway, I'll be showing you some recent footage of their usual ridicule tactics through the media, their favourite slogans like Little Green Men's that they've been using since the 80s to disinform and ridicule and put a stigma on this subject if you even speak out about it at all or if you are a witness or investigating it so enjoy share like and subscribe to this video and also check out my instagram aussie ufo news technology that is non-human firstly why have you even got a ufo office if you don't think there's such a thing as ufos what are you doing in that ufo office nothing there's nothing to do in there because ufos are not real we just sit in there and we do nothing all day long be careful i do not trust arrow i do not trust dr sean kirkpatrick i made that clear on a social media post because i know something remember what i was saying earlier he's a puppet so here's the deal. People should come forward, but guess what? Turns out to journalists, you're more protected than if you go through this normal process. If you go to the ICIG, you're more protected than through the normal process. And that really hurts me to have to say, because I would love there to be a formal process that protect the people. This is serious shit. People are concerned for their well-being. If you accept UFOs are real, you accept that we've been trying to work on them, you accept that that's been hidden by the government, then you must come to the logical conclusion as a logical person that there are means and tactics that are used to silence people that are asymmetric, not legal. Propulsion systems, I will tell you, fact, are considered at the level of weapons of mass destruction by our intelligence agencies. I know that is a fact, Chris. Definitely one of the main reasons why they are covering this up. They also covered the atomic bomb up in the exact same Serious? way. Serious? Silver, shiny object, or objects, it seems, floating in the sky yesterday. Ah, 
shiny objects floating in the sky. Yeah, let's straight away put in everyone's mind that they're balloons. Floating, key word. You can see all the people stopped on the street there in their tracks looking at it. Some folks say they saw lights. Ah, some tangible evidence, lights. Let's see if they mention how there's other angles of the siding and how they moved coherently together like they were communicating. Others were maybe waiting for little green men to arrive. Ah, right on time. Just in time to ridicule the evidence. Little green men. Absolute classic mainstream media tactics. Reading off a teleprompter and they play the X-Files music, they mislabel me, they actually- Tinfoil hat. Might be time to grab your tinfoil hats because the aliens are coming and apparently a lot of them- Little green men. There have been almost 1,000 documented UFO sightings in the UK since January 2021. And they even seem to be targeting certain areas of the UK more than others. Although I don't know where the arrogance comes from, from anybody saying there's no way there's any other life anywhere. See the smirk on this talk show host's face? This is why they have arrogance, because if she doesn't ridicule the subject, she will be ridiculed herself. This is the stigma of this subject. Now, this annoys me when the talk show host is contradicting her own question, which is, where's the evidence, basically, for these accusations, when she admits that there is a block through the Disclosure Act that does not allow them to release any classified information. The gravity of the accusations that were just made in that clip. If the argument is that people who are threatened don't want to be hurt, I understand why you wouldn't want to make disclosures. What is the rationale for not talking openly about people who are already deceased as a consequence of coming forward? At a, at a certain point, it, I'm sorry, I, like, I feel like I keep saying this. It's not that I don't want to want to believe, but what, what is, like, the allegations right. are escalating without the specificity escalating. Right. She obviously doesn't want to believe it. And as well, she knows what a disclosure agreement is. She's just following again what the mainstream media want them to do, propelling any negativity and stigma towards this subject. Or without any evidence. Yeah. Escalate. And these are the links the intelligence community will go to to make you believe what they want you to believe. Everything you hear isn't true on the mainstream media. Please remember that. They wanted to shut him up as a whistleblower. They filed this stuff. They delayed his testimony to Congress. They tried to smear his reputation and that didn't work. So then they fed it to a reporter who smeared it all over the place. I mean, aren't they fundamentally correct that like you are publishing dirt that was tipped to you by intelligence community? You try to smear this person to discredit their testimony under oath at Congress. The US has been lying through its teeth, of course. Now, why would the intelligence sector of America go through all this trouble to discredit someone if they were just making up silly lies? Maybe because they hold the truth. What David Grush is saying is factual. As hard as it is to believe, it is factual. He holds the highest intelligence security clearance in the whole of the USA. He is not someone who would make up silly lies for attention. David Grush is telling the truth. I'll leave you with that and see you next time.